Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, today I want to uh, have a look at uh, two aspects of Rails. One is the um, scaffolding, which is what most people see first when they hear, hear about, hear about, um, about Rails. And the other is metaprogramming. I think they are related in a way that they are at the opposite corners of the, of the game. So first we will try to, or we'll, we will scaffold an, a simple app and we will then um, have a look and uh, see how this can be, how the, the amount of code can be reduced by metaprogramming. Um, so, all right, first we go to the right directory and we produce, uh, create a new, new Rails application, Rails, new uh well let's call it um uh i don't mind um, library all right so this will create the the, the basic app um and uh, until now i always try to to show you the things as as bottom up as possible um to really understand the concepts uh, today we will have a look at the more um, uh, or at, at, at a way how we can um, set up things to get, get things running quickly. Um, so library, um, and we can just start the server, and uh, we'll see that the application is running. Yeah, all right. So this is a brand new Rails application which is uh, which can do nothing um, so far. All right, uh, custom library alright. Um, and now we will use Rails to set up things as fast as possible. Open it in a browser. Oh yeah, uh, just uh, uh, use version control so we can see changes. Okay, so we just checked in all the, the totally basic stuff. Uh, so this is now a new Rails project which knows nothing. Okay, and uh, we want to create a library, so what we need is Let's say we let's start with um, with books. So we say Rails uh, Rails generate scaffold um, and we now scaffold a book. And a book has a title, which is a string. An author, which is a string. For simplicity, of course. Uh, Sting is a very special author, um, and probably the number of pages, integer, and uh, ISBN, which is, for example, let's say it's a string, it doesn't matter. Okay, and if we do this, Rails does quite a lot of stuff. Let's have a look first. It invokes the active record generator, which creates a migration file. For the um, for the books model with a uh, title, author, pages, and ISBN, um, um, all right, we have to change that. Um, it then creates uh, a model file, which is just very uh, very simple, very basic blank unit tests. It then creates a books resource route, so the route is there automatically too. It scaffolds a controller. So the books controller is being written automatically um, and it adds the ERB HTML templates. Um, unit tests for the controller, a helper, JBuilder files for creating uh, JSON um, and uh, also a style sheet for the, for the book stuff and for the scaffold stuff. So, this is, well, in a way, a complete application. So let's have a look at the code. We see quite a lot of untracked stuff. The only file that was changed is the, the routes file. So let's see what changed. A books resource was added. 
Um, and we can um, just go there and uh, add a root route so we can um, redirect. Uh, I think it's to redirect books. So the uh, routing page just vanishes. Um, and uh, yeah, again, let's see. We have the um, the migration file being created, uh, which is db migrate create books. Strnik is still false. Strng. String string integer string. All right. Um, so let's just, without further looking, let's just um, do the migrations. Right. Db my uh, db db migrate right so now we should have the books table and the application is still running so we can just reload okay and now we are at the books index page we can create a new book blah obviously So we create our book. This is then the so we had we had the uh, the edit page. Now we're at the show page. If we say back, we go to an, to an index page where the books are listed. Um, we can show, edit, and destroy the book. We can create a new one. Yeah, just random stuff. Yeah, at least numbers probably. Create another book back. Okay. So um, of course we could we can add. We can easily add more uh, models and yeah, get uh, get things set up pretty quickly. Um, so let then see. Um, there was a controller being created. This is the books controller here. Let's have a look at the books controller. Um, it is of course as always it's an application controllers books controller. Um, Inherits from, from application controller, which is a action controller base, as always. Um, and all, the, uh, all the, uh, the, the normal actions are being implemented automatically. So we have an index, which just fetches all books. We have a show thing, which does nothing, because the, the, we use a before action set book for show, edit, update, and destroy, and show book, uh, set book. Um, where is it? Oh, yeah. Um, fetches the book with a given given ID. Um, edit is empty too because we don't uh, we, we 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 set the book by the before action and uh, create and update are pretty much the default implementations. And we can also use them to say directly books .json. Oops, JSON, and we'll get the JSON representation of the stuff. Um, and we can even see these so books. We have both. We have the index HTML herb, and we have the books JSON JBuilder, which is a, a DSL to describe JSON. Um, and we can easily change things here. So for really setting up CRUD applications, this scaffolding is pretty neat. Um, and if we decide we, you know, well, we want to create a library, so we need something else. So we need probably um, generate scaffold. Uh, let's say we need we need rooms for the uh, rooms for the library, and they have a title which is a string nothing else then we see uh, oops. we have a rooms controller which looks pretty much the same apart from the fact that every everywhere where in the other one there's a, there's a book it's a room here um, and we can go there and see at the uh, look at the rooms 
Ah, I forgot to run the migration. Can do it here. All right. So now we can create rooms. Um, yeah. So for setting up things quickly, this is quite neat. But as I said, the disadvantage is um, we are using a lot of generated code. So this is code that yeah is being written by the framework, and it doesn't doesn't automatically change, of course. Um, so whenever we have new ideas, we have to change it everywhere. Um, and so I think I, 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 can, I consider it neat to um, add a little bit of metaprogramming, whether it's reasonable, uh, totally reasonable to, uh, to do it in this very po at this very point um, could be discussed, but just to get the idea. Um, I'm not sure whether I ever mentioned concerns. Um, concerns are pretty much um, Rails modules or Ruby modules. Um, and we just create a concern, a new file. Oh, let, let's just, we just um, uh, commit this stuff. So we can see the changes better. So now we have all the um, books and rooms scaffold stuff being committed and being part of the uh, uh, repository. All right. So we create a concern and we call the, uh, uh, this is a module uh, and we call it rest or crud concern. Let's go to crud concern. But concern RB. All right. So this is this is a module, and um, as I say, I'm not sure whether you remember. Um, modules can be included. So when we add some function here, um, yeah, um, yeah, probably just. Hello, and we include this concern in, um, for example, let's take the books controller. Um, and we add this, for, for example, in the index action. We can we call just call this. Uh, let's call it greet. That's at least somewhat reasonable. Um, if we call read here and then uh, open the books view again, and scroll down, we see this hello. So the implementation of the, the function that prints this hello is in the CRUD concern module. Um, and we include it by writing include CRUD concern here. And all the functions that are declared in the, in the CRUD concern are mixed into the books controller. So you can have um, code that is used in multiple, um, uh, in multiple models or multiple classes. Um, you can have that in, in a module and you can then include this module wherever you need it. Um, and this is not necessarily part of the um, inheritance chain. So we have a, we have a, a straight inheritance chain. We can't we can't have, can't have the diamond of death. So we always uh, we are always subclass of one other class, but we can have implementations that we mix in using these modules. Um, and in fact, for the uh, for the for the for the for the method lookup, the CRUD concern is. Um, so when when when, when uh, we are in the books control, when we have an instance of books controller, and we tr when we call greet, it will first look whether there is a greet implementation in the books controller. If it doesn't find an implementation there, it will first then first look at the, in, in the CRUD concern because it was included, and after this, it will have a look in the application controller. So the um, included modules 
are put into the method lookup chain. And um, so you can, yeah, have implementations in a, in a, in a separate place and um, add them to the, uh, to the lookup uh, part. Okay, but this is of course nothing that this is this isn't uh, helpful at all. But um, wouldn't it be neat if we just said we have an index implementation which is which is generic? So if we just if we could just say we implement index in this concern and then include this concern in books and uh, rooms, and it does the the right thing in both cases. Um, and to do so, we should just probably stop in the debugger and see the, uh, what, the, what the situation is when we, when we come there. And of course, we have to um, comment this out because, of course, uh, we don't... Um, uh, yeah, otherwise, the, this index action would be caught. Okay, so again, let's clear the terminal and reload okay what's the situation what a self so although we are in the crud concern the implementation is in the crud concern self is still the books controller so self is not the crud concern but self is the books controller we're at an instance of uh, of books controller yeah so um yeah self is, is an instance of books controller um and uh, self.class obviously is books controller. Self class name is books controller. So we could find the name of the current context or the, the, the topic of the current context in the books con uh, in just by having a look at the, the, our own class and the name of this. So. What we can do is um, go to the CRUD concern and say class name is self.class.name. Oops. Um, but the interesting part is not the uh, books controller, but the interesting part is the books, of course, because we, we are, are dealing with books. So um, we take this name and we could, for, for example, uh, the simple, simplest way is to uh, split it at the controller so first. Well, this is a little bit uh, hacky, but still this extracts the name books from the uh, from the controller, and if we then say singularize, we have book, which is the model we are actually dealing with in this class. So we could say dot singularize, singularize, right, and. Um, we, we, we can't assign class something because class is a, is a keyword. So we have to say, uh, for example, write with K. K is class name dot constantize. Constantize. So let's see. First, we get the book and then we <clears throat> we get the class. Now we have the class book in the variable class. Mm. And we can then say class.all because this is the books class, the book class, and book can be queried. This is an active record subclass, and so why not query it? Okay. So we have the the uh, the actual class, but in the index implementation we had in, we have in the books controller, we see uh, apart from it was just nonsense. We have the instance variable books being set to book.all. 
So if we want to mimic that, we can say, um, oh, let's, so in class name, we have this capital book. And um, we want to set the variable, so we, so um, class name is book, just for reference. And we want to set This is what we, what we want to do in a way. Um, and uh, luckily, um, we can use tableize, tableize, tableize. So which, this takes takes a string and uh, makes a corresponding temp table name, which is plural. Um, and so we just you know, so that instance variable set. Okay, I always mix this up. Instance variable set. Ah, correct. Has to start with an add. And then class name dot tableize class dot all. So, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, we have to. This, of course, caused an error because the implementation wasn't there. If we reload now, we will have all the books listed. And we don't have an, an index implementation in the uh, actual books controller. We just removed that. We don't need that anymore. Beach, done we are. Um, and uh, we could do the same with well, this is the joke with it. We could just uh, remove the index implementation from rooms too and say include crud concern. So let's see whether it works with the rooms too. The boom. So we have an we have implemented in our crafts concern uh, a generic index action. Um, I do not claim that the implementation is extremely clever, but we can use it like this. Um, and uh, for of course, it, it would be helpful to have class name and class. Oh, we could probably call this class name with K for consistency reasons. Um, these two can or should be um, actual methods, I think. So we can use them everywhere because we will need them for the other for the other actions too, of course. So we say def class name. Yeah, and it's even can even write it like this. Um, this is the endless def def, in, uh, def syntax that was introduced with Ray, Ruby three. I'm not totally sure whether I like it, but you can use it like that. Uh, but I, I think I prefer doing it like this and also use, uh, oops, and also use a little bit of caching. So it need not be uh, called every time we need the functions. So now we still have this class name thing um, and our class.all which will then call these methods that take care of um, extracting the, the, the required uh, elements. These are, I think, it would be reasonable to have them protected. Like, I think it could even be, yes. Private means can be called without using uh, an explicit um, callee. So again, let's see, merp. Still works. Surprise. Um, the other one was books, I think. Merp. Yay. Okay. So we have our class name, we have our class. Um, and this was sufficient to implement index. So after a little bit of cleanup, this is not a lot of code. 
and we have one generic index action and we could take we can make sure that for every um for every uh, CRUD class that we are using, the behavior is exactly the same, which is yeah quite neat, I guess. Um, and we could also, for example, make sure that the current collection is available for some uh, with, with, with the same name every time. This could be done too. Um, we'll see how that. Um, Okay, so let's see. Let's, for example, have a look at the show action and see whether we, this can be uh, factor, factorized too. So if we have a look, the show action is empty anyway, and there is a before action set room. So we have to uh, mimic this before action stuff in our um in our crud concern too so first this this before action call doesn't work like that we have to do it a little bit different but we have this set room thing and of course this is yeah this is, it is set room it is not set something abstract but set room and set um book and whatever um when a module is being included, there is one method of the module being called that is uh, included by. So when the books controller includes the CRUD concern, this method is being called and the books controller is being given, is, is, is the argument of the um, of this included call. Let's try to see this in action. Now let's put a debugger there. Reload. The boom. We're on the debugger. So what is by? By should be the books controller, but the class books controller. It is not an instance, but the class called include. And so the books controller is being is uh, so the the, the 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 class calling the include um is the argument of the included method um itself is the crud concern so we are in the context of the crud concern but we are um in the um Yeah, the, we, we have access to the books controller or to the rooms controller, no matter, uh, any, whatever uh, controller is just calling right now. So we want to implement this uh, set room thingy. Um, so it, it looks reasonable not to use set room, but to, to um, use an abstract name. So set, for example, set current um, set current model. So this would be, uh, so, so this, this reduces the amount of, of metaprogramming necessary. We will change that later probably, but. So what we have so far, we, in, in the rooms controller, we have this before action set room, blah, blah. This is nothing but calling the method before action of the rooms controller. This looks like declarative whatever magic, but it isn't. It's just a function call. Having this in mind, we can just say by before action. So we call the before action method of the rooms controller, which is exactly what was done in the, uh, in the rooms controller. But we don't say set room, but we say set current object. Or show edit update destroy. And of course now set current object isn't there. We have to implement this. Uh, all these are helper stuff. 
we have set part object. Um, okay. So we say instance variable set class name dot underscore. So this produces uh, a sing so underscore is pretty much the same as as tableize but in singular. So we don't have the uh, so tableize produces room to rooms lowercase rooms and underscore makes room to room underscore with underscores instead of camel case. Oops. Um, and this is then class dot find of params ID. Which is the which is pretty much the implementation of um, where are we the set room so set set room is room equals to or oh, set assign uh, room dot find of params ID okay so we can remove that oops we don't need that anymore we don't need that anymore oh we don't need that anymore um. Okay, so set current object is doing class name underscore class find params ID. And show needs to do nothing else because it is done all it's all done by the before action specified down here. Okay, so this is we cleaned up the rooms controller. Set, let's do the same with the books controller. I can remove this, can remove that. Um, and uh, I can remove this one. Oops. All right, so call again. Uh, I think I forgot the, oh yeah. Okay, and now we're calling show and it still works because the book Instance variable was set in the CRUD concern show, but not explicitly in the show action, but in the before set current object thing. Um, so you could probably add an uh, logger.info CRUD concern concern set current object and when we then reload here we see that crud concern set current object was being called okay um so this is show the same is true about edit we don't have to do anything special can just remove edit for the book from the books controller and from the um, from the rooms controller. It should work out of the box because edit doesn't do anything. Edit, kaboom, works. Um, okay, so let's now have a look at a more slightly more uh, com complex thing again. New. So all we have to do for new is assign a new whatever thing to the correct instance variable. So this is pretty much the same as a set current object. You can say instance variable set class name underscore and not class dot find but class dot new. That's it. Um, and again, we go to the rooms controller and remove the new action. The books controller remove the new action don't need them anymore okay so go back new and it works so we have a new book and we have a new room um so what's next um yeah so create and update are the most complicated uh, of the of the actions. So let's 
first, for simplicity, go to the destroy thingy and um, make a generic destroy implementation. Got concern. Dev. Oh, we can just paste it. Destroy. So, room destroy is not what we want, what we want to do, but um, we need the current object. Um, and we are setting the current object via the set current object method, but it's totally inconvenient to again create the correct um, uh, instance variable name and use instance variable get here. So it's just way more convenient um, to actually set set a local variable. So I, I'd suggest using uh, self.current object. Is this and then instance variable set that. So we also have the, the current object in a local variable and we have we of course have to de declare this variable in a way because we are um, not using the add, not, uh, add thing but we are uh, using a, a, a setter and a getter. So again we say by error accessor current object. All right, so let's see whether um, edit on new. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. No, new not, but uh, say show still works, looks like. Um, so this set current object not only sets the at room instance variable, but also the current object yeah method yeah the uh, current object has a getter and a setter and it sets the current object um, the current object variable too which can then be generically used because in this destroy yeah we have to otherwise we'd have to 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 yeah somehow compute the correct instance variable name so we can just use the uh, either use the add current object and this current object is just, just a setter for that or we can also just use it without the add because we have an accessor for it and respond to blah blah redirect to ah and this is ugly then um, because we have to somehow compute the correct urls too because otherwise yeah um, Sorry, um, we somehow have to uh, show the. Um, uh, we some, some have some have have to to compute which is the route that we actually want to go to now. So, I'd suggest probably not the um, the best possible idea, but um, we can just say we define a local function and we call it current index URL. This then um, sends or calls the yeah uh, we want to go to the rooms URL so we want to call the uh, class name Tableize URL. And we send this ourselves. So we will call the rooms or books URL method, which is exactly what's happening here. So we have a instead of redirecting to rooms URL, we are redirecting to current index URL. Um, and the notice is then not rooms, not room was successfully but yeah class name was successfully 
destroyed. This might, of course, break as much as possible because uh, this is, doesn't care. It takes care. This doesn't take care about uh, camel case being ugly and stuff like this. It doesn't. But it does the trick just for uh, shits and giggles. Um, and in the JSON case, we have no content. This is correct. So uh, in the best world, we should. When we look at the books, and we click destroy here, we should destroy the blah book. And we are sure, yes, please. So, and the book was successfully destroyed. Although um, I may have forgotten to, to delete. Oh no, I, I already deleted the implementation in the, in the rooms controller. Oh, no, but not in the books controller, I'm afraid. Yeah. So. My happiness was premature. Create a new book. Wanna delete this book? Okay, so let's have a look whether we can destroy it. We and uh, I deleted the the uh, the, the the actual de uh, destroy implementation, and it should now use the destroy implementations from the crop thingy. It still worked. Fancy shit. All right. So in the crop concern, the destroy action works too. Um, let's have a look at what, what, what's left. Create an update. So let's start with create. Um, let's go to the crop concern. Great. Um, now we have this books book params. This is something that can't be guessed. This is something totally explicit because we, we can't know in, in advance which parameters will be will be valid for for um, for creating and updating. So the, it may not be so easy that you can just allow all of them, but. Um, this is something that it's, I am afraid this has this really has to be has to be explicit at least in a way because yeah we just we don't know whether probably you, probably it's not it's not allowed to set the ISBN or whatever so this may be the case so this books params is something that needs to be explicitly uh, implemented but um, apart from that everything can be done here. So we don't, oh yes, we, we need it. Um, let's say we have new object is class. So this is then book, for example, new. All right, and the, the params, we have to somehow extract the, uh, the, the, the parameters. Um, let's call this all params. And we send ourselves the uh, yeah. class and it's book params, so it's just underscore params and all params. All right. So now, now we have a new object. And now there there are two possibilities. The one is <clears throat> we where ah we have to save the new object. And if this worked, we can then just redirect to new object. And again, instead of book, say class name was successfully created. Um, and in location, this is not book, this is the new object. And at the else case, is the case where the um, create could not be performed because, for example, some um, some validations didn't work. So we then have to render the new action, which is fine, and say that is unprocessable entity. But to render new, we need the instance variable book or room or whatever being set. 
So this is something we have to explicitly do. Um, and we just use it. Just copy this from here. Bitch. So self current object is a new object. And instance variable get class name underscore blah 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 self current current object. This is fine. So now when rendering the new view, the book instance variable or the room instance variable will be set. Hopefully. Um, and let's for example add a, a book. Uh, let's add a validation. Validates title presence true so we can't save without a title uh, and we have to remove the standard implementation from the books controller we this is it Yeet. get rid of it and same in the rooms controller destroying the create actions okay so new book title and we omit the title just add a author and the number of pages and an isbn say create book and get it. ah all right this is we can't underscore the class but we can underscore the class name because underscore is a method of string Oh, over well, here, yeah, yeah. Okay, class name. Let's try again. Title can't be blank. And the author is there, and the pages are there, the ISBN is there, just the title it just couldn't be saved. We now add a title, create book, and here we go. And see that we successfully created the stuff without any implementation in the books controller. It's all just in the crud concern, which is used in books for books and rooms. Um, next thing is we want to remove the update method from both books and rooms controller. Uh, no crud concern. All right, create and update. Okay, we have to magically extract the um, the parameters again. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, we can't use we can't use book because yeah, this is would be the specific one, but we can use um, current object because. The current object had been set by the um, before filter. So um, update is amongst those where the bef before action set current object thing works. So if this worked, we can, uh, uh, not book params, but o params, redirect to current object. This is fine. Okay, again, we have to remove the book, replace it by class name. Um, otherwise, we have to render the show thing, which is fine for, uh, for, the, the, for, for, um, for JSON. And in case we couldn't save, we would just render the edit view with the status unprocessable entity. And JSON, we render the errors with the status unprocessable entity too. Yeah, this should be fine. So I think it even it might work already. So let's change the name of this book to a better name. Really meaty. All right. So apart from the um, the allowed or the permitted parameters, which are 
yeah, which are an implementation detail we, we, you have to decide for every controller yourself. It, you can't, or they, they, you can't meta know this in advance. Apart from this, all the implementation of the CRUD actions is just has just vanished into uh, into this concern, and we could can now add five hundred more controllers, and they all look very much like this. And there's almost no code, and you could, of course. Uh, change the uh, the default implementations to match all your needs. Um, but until now, we still have all these all these views. So we have this books or, uh, directory, um, and we have, for example, the edit. We have the index. We have the uh, this form here and all this stuff and of course it would be neat to get rid of this too to have one generic edit implementation uh, edit view one generic index view and so on um sadly as far as i know we we, we have to if, if we want to do this we need to use um view inheritance which means when you are in the books controller, the books controller inherits from application controller. Um, and so if a view isn't found in the books directory, uh, the books folder here, um, the view lookup will have a look at the application directory um, and look whether it finds the index implementation there. So, um, there is no applic um, application folder yet. We have to create one new folder. Application. And we add a oh. uh, I switched to slim. I really, I really hate uh, verb. Um, just quickly add slim there. If we had done this before and done um, the uh, slim install, all the all the scaffolded um, views would be in slim too. This is can be fun. Slim minus or slim minus right, all right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. But this we won't use this anymore, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we added the gem, so we have to stop the server. Bundle install. Oops. Oh, an end missing. So we just add a H1 listing. Of course, we didn't remove the index action, so uh, the index view, so nothing changed. This is not too surprising. But when we do that, we go uh index html herb and remove this oh i'll just oh uh, uh, i'll just rename it so we can see have it at for reference and now there should be this listing because the uh, books controller inherits from application controller and therefore, it inherits the views of, of the application controller, which are in the application directory. And if it, uh, this, so application is just a name. It could be anything. So you, we could have called the, uh, instead of uh, inheriting from application control, we could have a foo controller here. And then the views needed to be in the foo directory, of course. So this is really just, just words. All right. So now we have a listing here. Um, and now things are getting ugly. So we have to decide how to how to generically. This is the important part. How to generically list um, our books, for example. And uh, what we can do is we say we have a table. 
Um, and in this table, we have a head. And then we say, um, so what do we call it? Class? Concern. Class name and class, yeah. Class dot attribute names each do num th num. So this should now produce columns for every attribute of the uh, of the current class. Kaboom. Ah, but this class isn't accessible. Why not? Because it is a private method. Instead of being private, it should even be uh, a helper method, actually. And we have to tell the, um, the controller that this is a helper method. So by dot helper method class. Um, helper method makes, uh, uh, declaring a method as a helper method um, makes the, uh, the method available in the views. So, all right. ID, taught, title, author, pages, ISBN. And of course, created, add, and updated, add are part two because of, well, we have all the names there. Um, okay, and we can then say tbody. And um, again, we, we now need the <clears throat> need all the all the objects that were uh, in this class name um, tableize variable, but we can also use the magic of um, current object and use just the current objects for that. And say self dot current objects is so we can now um yeah and we have to just declare this as a helper method too. So both the current object, we need that later, and above all the current objects. So let's have a look. Current objects each do object. This is, is a generic implementation. We don't know what kind of objects we have there. Um, and then we take the attributes names, iterate. Oh, yeah, we have a, a row for each of them. And then we take the attribute names and say td equals uh, object send name kaboom now we have a generic table with the gen with the, which is just works for every object that we put in there so um we don't need any index views anymore of course this is incredibly ugly um, and we have to think about how things can be made more, more, yeah, reasonable, more functional. But um, just to get things up and running, this is it. Um, and we can say listing of class name. Ah, class name is not helper method yet so again class name hmm. pluralize listing of books now we have them um and uh Yeah, pretty much the same can be done for for the for editing and um, and, the, and the and the show view and so on, but 
as you might already feel, um, for example, this showing all attributes, it just feels a little bit, yeah, unstable. Yeah, this 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 is not what you what you what you really want. Normally, you just yeah feel like uh, we we want to show only a subset of the attributes for the for the for the for the um, for the listings because if there's a description which is maybe which may be long or if there's, there are binary data or whatever you don't want to show them in the um, uh, you don't want to show them in the um, in the table so. Um, Let's do it like this, index attribute names. This isn't available yet, but we go to Craft Concern. And we, are, we implement our dev index attribute names as class attribute names, probably minus uh, created at and updated at. Um, this shouldn't change a lot. Plus, oh, no, this is of course not index, only attribute names. Okay, kaboom. Yeah, let's have a look why these are visible still. Created that. And updated that. And minus. It's just a set minus normally. Hmm. Index attribute names. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. It was it was correct for the um, for the header, but wrong for the uh, for the rows. Not correct for both. Um, this doesn't help a lot, but what we can now do is we could just go to the, uh, for example, books controller. And as we implemented the books params thing here, we can just say def index attribute names and return only title and author, for example. This just this is just uh, this just overrides the, the the default implementation that came from Crowd Concern. So Crowd Concern, in a way, adds the index attribute names method already. What we just override it and say no, we just want to see the title and the author. Kaboom. So um, like this, we could also. Have gazillions of methods like that for, for for example defining the 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 name the main name or the or the main attribute that it that, that is used for for heading for headers and stuff like that yeah so we can um, have default implementations in our craft concern and override this, all the stuff we don't like in specific methods if we feel like it. Of course, this could be done by assignment. So we could have an index attribute names variable two of, yeah, things like that. But I think this is the, the probably the best way to do it. Um, all right. Um, but um, in a way, what 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 we are doing like this is. Oh no. In including um, a concern, so including a module, um, doesn't give you the possibility to parameterize this. 
So the the uh, the inclusion is always a whole thing. Yeah, it's always you include the crowd concern. That's it. But sometimes it would be neat to just um, to, to give certain parameters and to allow the um, the uh, the inclusion to be yeah modified in in some ways. For example, giving uh, explicitly the attributes you want to show or defining the path, the, the redirection paths, the index paths, all this kind of stuff. That would be would we need to be able uh, to be it would it would be need to be able to to yeah to give them to this inclusion thing in a way explicitly. Um, this can't be done by include, um, but we can um, do some other things. Um, so when we when we look at the uh, the application controller, so first instead of in writing include crap concern here. Uh, we could go to the application controller and define a function. Mm. And this function is then just, or this method is just including the crap concern. So this is, well, this is in a way the first, first step to do this. So, how do you call that? Um, the rooms controller is a, a subclass of the application controller. The application controller has the method cruddify. So we, so we can just call it. We can just say cruddify. And this will then call the include crud concern. Uh, same of the book. So let's see. Yeah, it seems to work. Editing works. Yeah, it all still works. So it, we didn't change anything. Um, but here you see that the uh, all this pseudo pseudo um, declaration stuff like uh, validates or belongs to or has many um, or respond or whatever. This is all just function calls. And we just created a function gratify, which is in the application controller. And this then calls the crud concern. Um, and we could also say index actions, uh, in, index, no, what do I call them? Index attributes. Um, and this is nil by default, and we remove this here. So in the books controller, we all again have this default implementation, um, and we want to specify the index attributes. Just let's say just index attributes. This is probably neater. Um, we want to specify them in the Cradify call. So we're going to say Cradify index attributes uh, name, details, title, and author. All right. This would this would be neat some way to be able to do things like that. Um, so now we are here. We are in, in the process of defining the, or we, 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 we have a new class, um, and we call Cradify on the class being, class being, uh, being created. Probably it's, it's probably best to just uh, use the debugger here to see. Okay, we're just reloading. Okay. So what's self now? Self is the, new books controller already yeah we are calling the method cruddify of application controller but within the new books controller 
So if we want the books, so what we want to do is to, we want to implement a new function of the books controller. So we can just define a function here. Um, so let's first include the crap concern. If index attributes, so that is somebody gave some index attributes, define method. Um, I think this was hmm. index attribute names do index attributes and so if the parameter index attributes of the Cradify call was given, we define the method index attribute names on ourselves, that is the books controller or the rooms controller. And this is supposed to just return what was given here. Um, let's see. In, in the best world, we should now only have the author and the title left. Mm -hmm. um, so, and yes, for, for the rooms controller, let's see what happens there. Uh, yeah, nothing. yeah, okay, the rooms controller is too stupid because the rooms just don't have any proper arguments. So it's let's state the books controller. Um, and we can, of course, um, change the order. So we can say, okay, we'll first want, want the author, then the title, then the number of pages. Reload, bam. Um, and uh, by using the uh, i18n stuff, we could also say instead of just writing the symbolic name of the of the or the the, 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 the column name in the, in the database, we can say we want to use class dot human name human name. Uh, uh, it's a human attribute name. Oh, come on. So it is now author, title, and pages, and it should be complaining about uh... Oh no, the, the, um, the, um, Human attribute name doesn't create these translation missing uh, spans around stuff. This is just not, not yeah, just not there. But you, we, this could be used then to translate this to whatever language you like. Okay, so what we what we are doing here is we do the parameterization that we we wanted to have before uh, uh, from the very beginning. So in the, from the very beginning, we thought, well, we should be able to parameterize stuff. Uh, and it could be the case, for example, that you have a, a foo controller, which in fact deals with bars for some reason, um, of, for, with, with some compound whatever models. Um, and all this can then be used, uh, can then be, be given in the in, in the Cradify call or in the whatever call um, that will um, so you can you can for example explicitly add the class here. So the class is either the default implementation or it is the uh, the class that you're giving here. So you could then explicitly say, okay, we want to use the class whatever, something else. Um, or, for example, the, 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 all the URLs, the index URL and the um, edit and show and whatever, they can all be given here. Um, so by uh, adding a, a new uh, or another level of, um, of abstract, abstraction here with this Cradify call, you are then able to, to parameterize stuff. And um, we can, for example, say only, which is nil by default. 
Um, and uh, what we have in this credify thing, in the crack concern, we have index, show, edit, new, destroy, and create an update. Um, but you might not want all of them to be implemented by the default implementation. So what you could do here is you could say, we add another module. We call it index action. And module is not something fancy, but just a typo. Module show action. Edit action. I apologize for being boring. New action. And again, module destroy action. So within the outer crud, crud thing module, so we will call it crud, crud concern, we are adding a couple of new modules, and they don't do anything by default. They are, they are not included in any way. But a module update action. Okay. So yeah, now we have we have, we have all these um, um, we have all these modules, uh, and we can then say. Um, Uh, so we have index, show, edit, new, destroy, create, update. And we, um, so all actions is this. So this is an array of, of symbols. Um, oh, we just call it actions, doesn't matter, it's really just a local variable. Um, and then say actions equals to actions, actions, and um, only map. To sim if only. So <clears throat> if the only parameter is being, so, yeah, if, if there is, is, is an only parameter, we will then um, extract only the actions from this uh, parameter, um, or ex ex extract from, 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 th from this array only those that were given in the only. This is to be sure that you don't act, act, uh, accidentally give some other uh, words here in this parameter which are not part of the of the actions array and cause trouble of some some kind. And this to zoom is, re is required to make sure that if you give to the only uh, as uh, as an only parameter the, um, the the names as strings, then yeah, they wouldn't be the same. So that's this is why we do this to zoom thing. Um, okay, and then. Yeah. Um, uh, we can then say action actions each do nem. So this is then some of these words include 
Ähm, Drop Concern, const get num äh, capitalize action. I do admit this is slightly brain fucky. Um, probably uh, just lock this to see what's going on. So as for, for now, everything should be just the same as it was before. Didn't even break. This makes me, this does surprise me quite a lot. So I just decided to restart the server. Yeah, still works. Um, and if we now go to the uh, to the books controller and say only edit, for example, now the index action should be gone. So now we should run into some errors. Kaboom. So we just remove the index implementation by telling I just want this, I want uh, to, to have the, the edit uh, method only. So I add index again. Kaboom. There we go. So this is a way to, yeah, to control the, the, um, the automatic, automatically generated code for you. And of course, we could have these um, books params thing here. This could be something where we use the, um, the, the, the credify method too. So uh, we could say permit params. Again, remove all this shit. Okay, this will then, this will definitely break because this is an unknown keyword, doesn't know this yet. Um, can add permit params. So, if permit params present, so if something proper was given there, um, yeah, we can then say define methods, define method. This time we have to use some uh, string uh, magic again. And this is then class name dot underscore params do. And what it should then return params require, always, always forget this. I think it's, this requires, uh, yeah, require. And then the first parameter is the, um, so yeah, this is what it looks, looks like in the, um, actual implementation and the explicit exp implementation. And so we need the class name in the lowercase version underscore. And we then need to permit the, oops, the permit params. This defines the book params or the uh, room params or whatever uh, method and this is then be this can then be used later on in the um, uh, in the CRUD actions that were defined uh, beforehand so let's see uh, the rooms control is broken but um, let's say a look at the at the books control so we have oh, the books control here we go so we have this permit params title author pages ISBN uh, class name for books controller class. Let's have a look. Yeah, come on. Um, 
Ah, all right. Shovel is? Um, we don't have the um, implementation in the CRUD concern of, um, of class name um, is an instance implementation. It's not uh, a class implementation. So this is a function, uh, this is this class name thing, or this class name method is a method of an instance of the books controller or whatever. Um, and we then need, uh, so this is why we have this self.class.name. Um, uh, and therefore, we, uh, and this is being um, evaluated in the class context, not in the instance context. But, so we have to say class name. Yeah, this is we, this could be done better, of course. We could just factor this out and call the uh, call the class implementation from the from the instance implementation, but not just to get things up and running. This is easier. So class name blah blah blah. Let's see, this did not work out. Why not? Okay, I just think I was just too quick with the reloading. Okay, um, and now say new undefined method errors for new class. Okay, so what? Ah, of course, yes, we don't have a um, in the books controller. We remove the new. Okay, and now we can create a new book. And create, the book was successfully created. Um, and this is pretty much the absolute minimum that you need to define your controller. So there's really, there's almost nothing you can really uh, save. So this is, well, yeah, this is just necessary. And of course you have to, de um, if you could then continue this and to add, probably this could be, this could be a nice exercise. So, yeah, so we, we um, um, uh, what do you call it? For long? No, we, uh, we postponed, yeah. Um, the 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 uh, this week's exercise by a week. So, but if you if you feel like it, uh, you you want to uh, fiddle around with this shit, um, you could just um, add as we did with the index view. You could do this for, for example, show or edit or whatever, just to get a feeling of how to yeah how to add features like this. This could be quite interesting if you if you are into stuff like that. Um, well, and I think this is where I want to stop now. Um, I will uh, put this, um, uh, push this into my my, my uh, Git, um, and we'll give you the uh, give you access to the uh, to the repo, um, so that you can have a look if you want to. Uh, yeah, do you have any questions? Not. Yeah, I I'm sure this was very fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's worth it. And of course, exactly like this, it's, it's probably not helpful. But, and, and if you, yeah, I think, I think this is open source. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it meta minute? I don't know. Yeah. I think, uh... no, no. Oh yeah, so um, this is an implementation of what we just did, which is quite uh, quite, uh, qu quite thorough uh, and does quite a lot of well, yeah, more magic stuff. Um, and this is something that we are actually using. So this is really code that we use every on everyday base, and uh, almost all of our controllers are based on this Crutler stuff. Um, uh, although we we overwrite quite a lot, but um, yeah, you can uh, have a look. The, the the dependencies 
the warning about the security vulnerab vulnerabilities here aren't as dangerous as, as they look because the uh, the affected gems aren't really part of the other projects so it's not uh, not as bad as it looks okay just if you're interested uh, feel free to have a look at that and comment and give us great uh, pull requests with features and enhancements and stuff okay so yeah that's it for me no questions from you Christoph anything okay then thank you very much for your attention and uh, yeah see you next week I guess and as I said we are hiring bye bye <laughs>